Good afternoon, my name is Erica Arm, and today my presentation will be about assistive technology rights for students with disabilities. As you can see in front of you, everybody should have a handout. In that, um, we're going to quickly go over that handout to start the presentation. And if everyone can look at the um, front page, we all use technology in our classrooms, but are we using assistive technology for our students with disabilities? This handout is going to answer some questions that um, we have as a staff, such as, what is assistive technology? Why is assistive technology important? Where and when should we be using assistive technology? And how do we provide assistive technology? I've also um, provided questions for you guys to be thinking about and answering as I go um, through the presentation, such as what devices or items have your students used in the past in your classrooms? What have you incorporated, um, or how have you incorporated assistive technology used by your students in the past? And what other obstacles do you see with assistive technology? Like I said, keep this in mind as we go through the presentation. Feel free to jot notes down on the side, or I have provided a um, notes, question, comment section for you on the back as well. So as we get started, we all know that technology in schools is becoming integrated into every subject and aspect of our day. Our students are using iPads, smart boards. We're using the smart boards to present all our materials. And students are using computers as, as young as kindergarten to um, not only play games, but to work on math, reading, um, all subjects. This is requiring us as teachers and professionals to attend trainings to learn how to incorporate technology, not only in every aspect um, of the general education field, but also into the special education field. And we know this is a hefty task at hand, but we have to make um, technology accommodations for those students with learning disabilities. As inclusion classrooms are the new push for education with disabilities, that's going to put a lot more responsibility not only on the general education teachers to provide the right uh, materials necessary for students, but also the special ed education teachers. As they um, will have to meet with the IEP team and go with the therapist and the parents and stuff to see what is the best options for these students. According to the Technology Act, technology is a basic right to all general education students. That's why it's so important that um, we do our trainings and um, go through all of this because as well, assistive technology is a basic right for students with disabilities under the IDEA 2004. But unfortunately, it's not always available or used due to legal issues, unequal access, funding, and the diversity that occurs with assistive technology. What is assistive technology? Why is it important? IDEA of 1997 defines assistive technology as a device, item, piece of equipment that is used to increase, maintain, or improve the function of capabilities of a child with disabilities. There are numerous products on the market to assist students. Pencil grips, which we commonly see in all of our classrooms, Communication devices, I've seen children use iPads, they have their PECS books with pictures on it, um, sign language, we see students with wheelchairs, some have hearing aids, there's also toiletry, toileting products for students to use as well. So I want you guys to all take a moment and see, or and think about what you have seen in your classroom. If you want to jot a few down, that's fine. If you kind of want to talk amongst yourselves, I'll give you about it. Um, a minute or two to do this. And at the end we'll go ahead and go over and um, go over the presentation and kind of share our thoughts or what we've seen um, just to give everybody because we've not all seen the same students so just to give everybody kind of a general idea of um, what assistive technology we have in our school. Now going back, what is the goal of assistive technology? It is to reduce the barriers um, 
uh, in structural and everyday setting and provide flexibility in the way that teacher can present the subject matter as well as help the students respond and demonstrate their level of knowledge um, of the material being covered. If we don't provide assistive technology, the students um, might know it, but then they might not how to know how to express it to us that they do know it. So that's why we need to make sure that we're checking to make sh sure that students are understanding and they have the capabilities to communicate with us that they know what's going on um, throughout our classrooms. With this, students must, with disabilities must qualify to receive assistive technology by undergoing evaluations from trained professionals. It might be somebody off the IEP team, it might be somebody from the outside if they have other agencies they work with, um, but they, they do an evaluation to kind of see where they're at. And then we go from there to see um, what we can provide them. But students must have access to these assistive technologies due to law requirements and regulations that state we must provide all students with equal access to assistive technology. Unfortunately, the laws seem really vague and lack some guidelines on how the assistive technology should be provided. This causes many of us to develop our own assistive technology within um, for our students within our classrooms, which sometimes does not become fair because there's something we might not be able to provide that they should really need. Um, this problem doesn't only present itself within um, elementary, middle school, high schools. It also presents itself in college as they're doing more online classes, podcasting, and all that. How do they provide assistive technology when they're using so many different realms of technology in a large, diverse um, population? Um, the worst part is that the group that's most underserved in assistive technology is children under five. Now, as educators, we know that students um, or children, birth to three is when their brain is the most developing. So assistive technologies during that time um, is extremely important and critical for their brain development. Um, it's not going to hinder them. It could help them and um, help them communicate, express what they need. Um, and unfortunately, they're the ones who lack most of the um, funding for assistive technologies. With agencies and school districts um, having to serve a large population of students from birth to college, funding is becoming an issue. We can attest to that with our own schools just by providing the general needs for our students. That we're having to come more out of our pocket or do with less or have the kids bring more. So imagine the amount of money spent on assistive technologies. How can we provide what the students need but keep within our budget? Funding is the most prevalent obstacle school districts and agencies encounter when trying to acquire assistive technologies for their clients. It is not just buying the equipment needed, but it's also the training and implementation in a classroom that can stretch your budget. It's not one teacher needing to be trained. We have paraprofessionals that need to be trained. We have um, special education teachers, general education teachers, even like the special teachers with music, PE, all of them usually need to know how to the assistive technology work for a certain student that they encounter each day. But regardless um, of the budget, the IDEA 2004 states that all agencies must provide assistive technology um, regardless of the lack of funding. So you're sitting here thinking, what can we do? One solution to funding is grant writing. Now, I know the majority of us have written grants. We know how rigorous it is and time-consuming and how competitive it really is to um, attain a grant. But we are held to law to figure out how to provide for these students' needs. So grant writing does come very important um, within assistive technology. Now, there are other options, like um, we can ask the parents to check into their private insurance company to see if they would be able to provide um, or use their insurance to be able to provide assistive technology for not only us at school but then for them to use at home. Oops, sorry, I got behind on my slides there. 
So this brings us to um, talking about the diverse population when it comes to asking parents um, if their insurance are going to um, cover what we need because not all families are able to um, provide what we need as well. Not all families can afford to pay for assistive technology through private insurance. As professionals, we are to take into account the family's culture and socioeconomic, socioeconomic status when choosing an assistive technology. Some devices require training outside the home, thus causing family members to take a day off of work and perhaps not get paid. Not all families can do that because they make enough money to pay the bills each month, and one day off might mean that they can't put food on the table. We also have to take in consideration cultures such as Native Americans who do not believe that using assistive technology um, because they believe that they are the caretakers of their family and their children should be dependent on them, not a device that um, someone can provide. Now, a large population, population that we serve are African Americans. When they talk about assistive technology and using a device for their children, they, don't, they see it as a weakness. Um, to the world that there's something wrong with their child that they cannot fix and they have to have this to help them fix it. Um, obviously we don't see it that way. We see it as a way to help them but you know different all cultures are different and that's how they see it. So we have to keep that in mind as we choose um, assistive technology for students. Um, as we know, no families are alike, which means as teachers and professionals, we need to collaborate um, with one another to find the best possible fit for each student. By doing this, it should reduce the amount of abandonment factors of families who participate in the partnership of assistive technology. If they feel comfortable and um, they see the benefits to it, then they will be on board with us and we can all reap the benefits from assistive technology for their students. So remember, assistive technology plays a large role in children with disability in their family's life. We as a school district and professionals are to help provide the optimal assistive technology that we can. That is to remove the barriers for these students to be successful as our, just as our general education students are. So no matter what the obstacle comes our way, we will provide for these students. Let's be the best that we can be so our students can be the best that they can be. Thank you. Now we'll open it up to question, comments, or concerns. Um, go ahead.